Hi, I'm Patrick. And I'm Liv. And this is the Mach-E vlog. But today we're not in a Mach-E, we're in a Tesla Model Y. We'll explain why that is and give you our thoughts and impressions of the Tesla Model Y. So let's get started. So maybe you watched our Model Y test drive. It's something that we did before we had the Mach-E. Now we've had the Mach-E for a month. If you know what happened to it, you know it's in the shop. So we thought what an excellent opportunity to get the car that's comparable, the sort of other equal, and see how we feel about it for more time. We only got, what, an hour to test drive, Pierce? It was just about an hour to test drive it. So we've had the Model Y since uh, Wednesday morning when we had to put the Mach-E in the shop. And it's now Saturday, so we're going to spend the whole day just driving around and uh, learning more about the Model Y. We're actually going to take it on some routes that we're more familiar with that we've done in the Mach-E and in Patrick's old car and in my old car. So yeah. we have a good comparison. So let's go. So we are on our way to Lookout Mountain, which actually takes us directly through the same spot where we had the accident. It really is kind of a the main exchange between north, south and east, west. And in Denver, so how you doing? Good, I was looking for tilt light to see if I uh, could see it. I know, do you think we lost it here or at the next exit? I think it was back here. Man, you find a tail light on I-25 at 6, it's ours. <laughs> and there is a Maki on the road, oh my goodness. So pretty. That is painful to be in this Tesla and see that beautiful Mikey over there. Whoever you are, enjoy your drive. <laughs> see how the Tesla reacts to the speed limit changes. Um, currently at 65 and it's going to drop to 55 and then almost immediately to 45. So I have it on autopilot and we're going to sort of see like um, how accurate the speed limit changes are with the, the Tesla as well. So here comes the 55. So it recognized that the speed limit changed, but it's it's not slowing me down. So I had to manually slow down. In the Mach-E, it sees the speed limit and it'll adjust. So maybe I didn't have the right setting on, but it did not adjust. I'm gonna turn it back on. And now here comes the 45 mile per hour change. And Hey, I saw that. Yeah, I had to break again. So I'll, oh. I'll double check the settings, but it does recognize the the speed limit sign. And I think if I'm not mistaken, that there is a way to change that. So I'll look at that and make sure that I have the right setting on. Okay, we're starting the climb up Lookout Mountain. We're just passing the gates, which is the official start. And it's a beautiful day, so I don't know about you, but I'm expecting a lot of cyclists, a lot of runners. Yeah, if we weren't in the car, we might be on the mountain in our on our bike. Yeah, it's a really perfect day on our bikes. <laughs> Surprising. We didn't think there'd even be a parking spot available considering how many people there were. So just real quick, um, talking about energy consumption, sort of hard to see on this screen, but uh, we just came out up Lookout Mountain. Uh, very easy to get up here, of course, uh, driving, except for all the cyclists in our way, but that's cool. Uh, right now, like we were at 741 watt hours per mile over the last five miles, which is basically what Lookout is. Uh, we're over 20 miles from our house uh, and we're averaging 471 watt hours per mile. This is always the the worst part getting up to Lookout Mountain. You could already see that it's like uh, the average is dropping back down now that we're just sitting here. 
um, if you're curious, if you're comparing to the Mach-E, the Mach-E uh, does uh, miles per kilowatt hour. And to figure out like what that would be, uh, the, the translation is like you take a thousand divide, divided by 471 and that would result in your uh, miles per kilowatt hour. So I'll pop that up on the screen as well so that you can see like the comparison of what that would be Mach-E terms. This is of course high because we just climbed a mountain and we'll keep track during the day to do some comparisons. very nice stop at Buffalo Bill's Grave, which I actually haven't walked up to before. Oh my goodness, there are so many cyclists. <laughs> this is the official top of Lookout Mountain, so it's like you have succeeded. And now we're just popping over to the next park. Oh, that's actually more crowded. It is way more crowded. Now we're going to see if we can pop over to the next park. <laughs> Navigate to Evergreen. I don't think there's connectivity, so the voice commands don't work. We have 3G, though. Connection error. Uh, oh. Wow. So that's interesting. Let's yeah. try, I want to try, um, turn on seat warmers. Yeah, nothing will work without connection. We'll try that. Like, turn on the windshield wipers. So voice commands do not work at all if you don't have good connectivity. And we're just outside of Denver. You can see we just happen to be on top of a mountain, not even that big of a mountain, but that's sort of interesting. And this is golden, golden. So it's town right next to us. Yeah. It says we have three, three G coverage, but apparently voice commands don't work if you don't have four G or better. Turn on seat warmers. Yeah. Evergreen. Which is where we often go after lookout. So we have 3G connection and it just can't find anything even with 3G. Disappointing. Yeah. Because this is... The closest mountain in Colorado. Yeah, it's not They're really far a further. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you can see there's a ton of people around. Yeah. yeah we have 3G coverage. Um, let's see what my phone has. I'm on T Mobile on my phone. I was just checking Facebook. <laughs> yeah. But what do you do? Because so often we'd be out of coverage. I thought that because it's built into the car, then it functions no matter what. So I just did evergreen on my phone and it found it so I could navigate. So we just got back in the car after going for a little hike. It's quite warm. I'm not super sure what the temperature is, you know? It says 56, but the it's, car is hot. It's, yeah, the car is very, very hot. So Patrick turned the air on full speed. Well, I had it on auto. And on auto, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm I can I'm barely baking. feel it. So let me just turn this. And this, the temperature set to 68, so that should be fine. And it's blowing a lot of air. It's just not that cold. Not at all. Can we set it lower? It's also yeah. a pain because it's like to adjust the, the fan, I need to like tap on a little minus button. Yeah. This is not the time um, we necessarily want to do yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, no. And so it's 1 p.m. now. We did check the roof at noon. And it's hot, but so is the Mach-E. Um, it feels very similar as yeah, far as light it's coming suddenly, in and heat coming in. It's like uh, right here, I don't feel any heat. If I touch it, it's warm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's it's certainly not too bad, but the dash area for some reason is quite toasty.
It's so weird because I'm used to looking at the dash screen <laughs> and seeing what you're doing. Uh, there's so no dash screen. There's no dash screen. So this little blue thing means that you're in... The, it's doing autopilot right Autopilot, now. okay. That's... Uh, to be honest, equally as subtle as the dash screen, I would say. I mean, it's, it's or a little way more. bigger to see the bubble. Yeah. When you're driving. I know. It, and it's like I got to glance over to see. And I know it's not a big deal, but it's like I mean, come on, like this or like that. Yeah, like this is very easy for me to see. The dash screen on the Maki -E is easier for you to see, and, and I personally the like it. Is like that big, so it's yeah. Very easy to see. I think it should be easier for the driver to see, personally. Woo! So trying to disengage autopilot on my own feels a bit rough. Like it's, it's like I'm in uh, some ruts on the road and you gotta like pop out of those. Uh, the mach -E lets you just sort of nudge it and get out of it. It feels way smoother. Uh, I'm sure as a as a passenger it probably feels whoa. It it's just breaking. it just broke it just hit the brakes on its own. Oh really? That's the um, phantom braking that uh, people have talked about. That was like the first time I've ever seen it. Uh, but yeah there was really no reason for it to start braking. Like the car in front of us was actually speeding up and for whatever reason it decided to slow down. Yeah, we have the dash cam footage that will overlay at the same exact time. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't huge. It wasn't, like, some people have said it was pretty, like, it's a dramatic, like, slamming on the brakes. It wasn't really dramatic, but I did feel, like, it lurched forward, or my body lurched forward as it was hitting the brakes. Um, I think it was you. Yeah, if, and if we were in traffic, I would have been worried about that a little bit, but, uh, yeah, that was, that was interesting. I I wanted to experience that just so that I know what, knew what they were talking about. So I change lanes, and if you change lanes with basic autopilot, it disengages. Um, to re-engage, you have to, like, just, like normal, you just gotta re-engage autopilot. But this is sort of, like, interesting because look how small that print is and how far down and to the right it is. I know what it says. I mean, you get used to it quickly, but it's like... I'm still trying to read what this bottom line says, but it's like I'm driving at 72 miles an hour and it's like accelerator, what? It, it, it's just like, that's just ridiculously small for something that the driver is supposed to be uh, taking note of. Like it's a warning message and I, that font is just really small yes. and down and to the right. Whereas anything that the Maki -E is communicating to you is directly in front of you, and they don't put little tiny words on, on the screen like that. And we've also been talking about, like, just the fact to engage autopilot is, seems pretty simple. The Maki, -E, it's, a, a, it's a tap of the button. And then now if I want to change lanes, I took autopilot off, but to get it back on, it's another double tap and then there again it's like it it pulls you to the the center of the lane um, not as smooth as I think it should be so uh, and, and the Maki -E, to be honest like sometimes it's done something similar but it feels like it's way smoother but um, for the Copilot 360 which is like basic autopilot changing lanes is way smoother if you check out our other videos I do multiple demonstrations of that. It automatically will re-engage once you change lanes. Okay, so we couldn't get any signal up in the mountains reliably. So we figured we would come down back to Denver. And a band that we really like is actually doing a free show on Twitch. So we're going to go find somewhere pretty to park and see if we can stream the show in the Tesla. I don't know about pretty. <laughs> <laughs> My request gonna find was someplace. pretty. My request was pretty, but he got distracted testing out all the um, autopilot stuff on the highway. So we'll see. We'll see. Picturesque, maybe. So we are waiting for Goldfish, this band we really like, to come on on Twitch. And I do have to say, it's actually pretty cool being able to have Twitch on in the car. 
Yay! Goldfish! Goldfish! So we can't play too much because it will... Copyright strike Copyright us. Strike, so, so we're going to go now! Okay. Another quirk I'm discovering is normally you just, you're supposed to just push the button and it releases the door and then you can open it up. I actually have the windows down right now because it actually slightly rolls down the windows, but I'm gonna hit the button. It just won't open. There, took three tries to get it to open. What are you doing? The cup holders, they don't adjust sizes, so it's like if it's loose, it's loose. <laughs> That's right, because the Maki has the grabbies. It groups it in. If it's small, it still holds it if it's big. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of road noise coming in. Let me make sure. Uh, yeah, all okay. the are up. Yeah, because it almost, the wind noise almost has that sound of someone left their window Slightly open, slightly, slightly Slightly open. open. <laughs> um, so it's that kind of sound. And the other thing with the noise, we keep turning the AC off, which... Now it's on auto, so... If I turn it on auto... It's really powerful. It's like, yeah, that's putting out a decent amount of air, but good God, it's noisy. It's really loud, yeah. It's like a turbine. How's my, is my hair billowing? It's not it's so strong, but. Yeah, it sounds way more than what it is. Yeah. If I turn auto off. Okay, and now this is on, on like seven. seven. But if you put it on seven, it doesn't feel like much is coming out. And we could adjust it. And it's I, not that cold either. I do think that the being able to tap the screen and wiggle where you want the air to come is novel. It's novel. not. It's, it's novel. Not yeah. Necessarily useful. I wouldn't want to have to go into that menu to have to do that, um, but it's novel. Uh, yeah, I kind of like it, but I don't want to have to do that. I'd rather grab well, something. Yeah, as a driver, it's like, yeah, it's novel, but it's it takes a little bit more precision. Um, I'd rather just adjust the vents and then adjust the flow. I think it's fairly easy. Uh, and it's nice that it has like 10 levels for the fan, but you literally are tapping multiple <laughs> times to get it to go up yeah. and down. Or you put it on auto, which so far auto has been off, in my opinion. About, or all the uh, way on. Well, no, I meant like it's, it hasn't been the proper speed that I want. Because yeah. it's like I hit auto and I wanted it to be eh, medium and it's like full blast. I'm like, no. So, auto has not been useful. Okay, look, we are boiling, so the air's on high. <laughs> but I was just noticing, I really like that there's a compass here. So I said that to Patrick, and he was like, oh, there's one on the Maki, but it's on the dash screen so that the driver can see. Like, there's not really any reason for me to have to see that there's a compass that we're going east. But how hard is that for the driver to see all the way across? Yeah, and it's, like, once again, small font so yeah teensy weensy and same color as the background and everything so some of the things that i really do find concerning are if you can see this like i can stick my finger all the way in in various points i'm not sure what's there but that does not at all seem safe or it just seems well in the, the line is not smooth. It's hard to see here, but it's like it bows out a little bit. And then if you go over here, like my, I can't get my finger at all in there. Here it's partial. I there it's like. Tickle the car's brains. Yeah, I can feel the foam. But, and the same goes for um, the other side. Gosh, a lot of bugs here. Like, I feel like I could pop this off. But this doesn't feel like a car should be like this. Uh, additional things are I do have issues with how cheap this feels. It, it feels extremely cheap and this is in comparison to the Maki. Also, if I'm opening this with my right hand, I would want to be able to flip this open there, but instead I have to use my thumb, which is not quite as ergonomic. This whole thing 
feels very flimsy and moving along with the sparseness of the interior this entire section is much more sparse than the Maki. The lack of that drop down glasses thing, which is just, if you no saw. No sunglasses hold her down. Yeah. If you saw our um, following the Maki tour last year, that was one of the things that I was nerdy excited about. So that, I, I just, I really find this disconcerting. Before we get into all of this, why don't we talk about specifically what we like about this car? There's a lot to like. If you are looking at a Model Y or a mach -E, there's a lot to like about both cars, specifically the Model Y. I mean, it's an electric car, uh, very uh, high powered, great instant torque. It is fast. It feels fast when you accelerate, when you're in traffic, handles well. Um, it's just, you know, it, it's everything that you hear about with Tesla that, you know, you get good performance out of it. So if that's what you're looking for, you'll be happy. If you like the minimalist design, this dash is very minimalist, a very, very clean interior and very open interior, wouldn't you say? Yeah, most certainly. It is a bit more open than the Mach-E. It does feel like we can see a lot. And the glass roof is more expansive, which I do like. I do really like the glass roof. And it's funny because before we got the Maki, -E, I didn't really care whether we had a glass roof or not. Like, it's not like I'm looking at the ceiling much, you know? But now I think I'm kind of pampered. I'm sort of used mm -hmm. to it. So I'm like, oh, very nice. So this one is very nice. I like it a lot. I think I like it better than Polestar. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's very, very nice interior. Minimalist, but very nice. Um, we like the fact that the, you know, the screen was very easy to navigate. For the most part, there's a few things, you know, I just didn't know exactly how to get to them, but it was fairly easy to get to things. We like the, the fact that just like with the Mach-E that you have uh, voice commands, uh, you had to hit the button, but uh, voice commands were very cool. The sound system was, we, we tried that out. I liked the sound system. It sounded really good and loud and clear, which I mean, you would expect, but it was, I, I enjoyed the sound system. I thought there were a lot of customization options in the sound system, which was cool. I really yeah. like the, um, you can like drag the dials up and down. It's not the word, the, the bars. Equalizer. Equalizer, yeah, you yeah. can drag, drag the bar up and down, sort of customize it the way you want. And I really did feel uh, a, an impact when we moved the sound around. So instead of having it centered in front of us, we put it behind us and it felt kind of more yeah. surround sound. And that was very similar to the mach -E, So it was very like, oh, okay, this is what we need to do. Because whoever was in here before had it centered on the driver. Well, there's two of us in here and I prefer my sound to be, mm. you know, more toward the back. So we adjusted that quickly and uh, got some really good sound out of it. I've heard good things about the sound system and I would agree it's a good sound system. So yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff to like like about this. The frunk didn't measure it, but it looks bigger than the Maki. -E. I think they're very similar in size once you move, remove the frunk divider in the Maki, -E, but looked uh, good size. And we already tested the when we did our Model Y test drive. The back is expansive, and I believe uh, you know measurement wise, it's bigger than the Maki. -E. Um, so we could probably fit the trike in. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we could fit this trike. We 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 did that in our Mach E test drive video. Um, so excuse me if you haven't seen that. Um, you know that's probably the biggest test, but we didn't feel like doing that. We're being lazy, but I, I have no worries that it would fit in here as well. Yeah, I mean, and we didn't want to test. Uh, we didn't want to scratch up a rental yeah. or anything like that. Um, Something else that I do like about this cabin is I like that you can charge both phones, the driver's phone and the passenger's phone. I was going to say that. I like dual charger. Yeah. Yeah. The dual charger is really nice. And I do like that it's tilted upwards so you can see your phone. So you could just tap and actually see your screen if there's anything going on. Yeah. Not while you're driving though. Yeah. Not while you're driving. But does it come on the screen on the horizontal screen as well? What do you mean? If you get texts and stuff. Uh, I believe you get notifications. Somebody let us know, like, yeah, we didn't pair our phone. I, I generally don't necessarily do that with a rental car, but do you get text notifications on the screen? I'm not sure if you do. Um, in the mach -E, we have Android auto running, uh, or I usually do. So then I get my text messages. I feel like Android you must auto. be able to, cause I've heard of people talking of cold quality and stuff like that. Well, you know, you can do 
calls and and uh but it's just through the car but you can also do this um you guys can't see this but there's calls you can have your calendar i think i'm not sure how that works but i i know uh you can get text messages or send text messages via voice command i believe if i'm not mistaken of course one of the things that everybody touts about tesla is autopilot didn't use it you know like extensively but i did use it quite a bit today um I, I thought it was great. It performs very well. There's some little quirks and part of that is just, you know, I'm not used to it. We did get the one instance of phantom braking, but other than that, it was great. It was uh, very easy to use, very uh, easy to understand what was going on with the information on the screen. And uh, I think it handled curves very well. I would say even better than the Mach-E. I think it didn't cancel on some sharp curves sharper or not in relatively sharp um that i think the the maki -E might have canceled on um so that was that was very nice um and everybody knows that now this one has basic autopilot and if you don't know there's basic autopilot and then if you spend ten thousand dollars you get enhanced autopilot which is part of the full self-driving package and that does some you know, more features with autopilot, like uh, navigate on autopilot and lane changes, those type of things. But this one just had the basic autopilot. So it was, uh, you know, keeping me centered in the lane and handling the curves and adapting to, to traffic. So very, very good system. And everybody knows Tesla has a good autopilot system. Very general things. If you watched my video on things that I like about the Maki, -E, once again, having the dual cup holders, one on either side, and there is a drink slot in the door. It's sort of facing forwards, which makes it a tiny bit harder to grab, but I still appreciate having those things. So we have sort of the things that I like within reach. Yeah. <laughs> So moving into things that we don't like as much, there are some things that I think I don't like because I've experienced the Maki, -E, and there's some things that I just don't like. And they, these aren't wrong. These aren't bad necessarily. They're just, you know, to our preference, you know, it sort of would be like the color of the car. It's black. I don't like black, but hey, that's just the color of the car. Um, and I don't like black cars, but you may love black cars. Nothing wrong with that. So yeah, that's an example. Um, you go ahead if you have anything. The biggest things for me are that I don't think uh, dexterity issues or ergonomics were as considered in the design of this car. The doors really piss me off. They really piss me off. Uh, if you watched my things I like about the Maki -E video, this is obviously something that I'm directly comparing to the Maki. -E. I find the way of opening the doors to be very considerate and to be something that I believe, and at least in my case, having two to three usable fingers on this hand, and this is my main hand for opening the door, I think that people with dexterity issues can do this, but this car is very difficult. I do not like the way you have to open the doors. I don't like that you have to keep pressing to have access to the handle. And then once you've done that, I really don't like the exposed glass because I want to grab something on the door and nothing that I want to grab is friendly. I either end up grabbing the exposed glass or the side of the door that feels unfinished and not meant to be grabbed. In contrast, the Maki -E feels considered. It feels like it's expecting you to grab it. Everything's sturdy. The window is enclosed. You press the button, you grab the little notch if you're getting in the front. If you're getting in the rear, it's even easier really because there is a recess for where your fingers are going to grab. And if you look inside the door, there is sort of a coated area for mm -hmm. you to grab or for what they sort of think is going to be children sitting in the back. So it's just, it's much more considered. And every time I've gotten into this car, I'm pissed off. And the couple times that I've gotten into this car with my hands full, which to be honest is like 90% of the time that I'm getting yeah. in a car, I'm even more pissed off, you know? Cause then I'm like, in my case, trying to, trying to hold the, the handle open and grab it, or yeah. I'm doing it with my only good hand. And then my bad hand is trying to hold things. It just, it really pisses me off. And I didn't really, like, I, I was like, yeah, it's a little bit hard, but it wasn't that big of a deal to me until this morning when we were trying to load everything in the car, all the cameras yeah. and stuff. And my hands were both full and I was sort of trying to do it. And I was like, oh, 
oh, now I understand. It's sort of a hard thing to maneuver correctly. And with the Mach-E, it's like you push the button and it's going to present itself and it's very easy to then just swing it open. So 100% agree. I prefer the Mach-E's handles way better. Um, another area that may be just a preference thing and it's the seats. Like I like that these have some a bit more side support than the Mach-E that we have. Um, but other than that, it feels like I, I, they're both vegan leather, but this does not feel as nice of vegan leather. They're not perforated. So it's, it's warm. Mm. That's, I think that's one of the reasons why we are warm today. Mm. They're also firm, which you may like a firm seat. Uh, it just, as we were driving around today, I noticed my back was feeling a bit sore. So I kept adjusting and adjusting. And I think I found something pretty decent. But a lot of it's related to just how firm the seat is. And we were also talking about they, they were squeaking a lot as we were adjusting. Mm. And that's just us because we're trying to film in and the car and not make squeaky noises. But yeah. it's really not that big of a deal. But yeah, I, I prefer the Maki seats quite a bit. I do prefer the Maki seats too. I think they're very plush and comfy. Uh, but I don't think these are bad seats. They're certainly not bad. And yeah. I still think they're better than the Polestar, like that canvas. Yeah, that they didn't. Yeah. Uh, so and you can't adjust the headrest. It doesn't yeah. go up, doesn't go down, doesn't go forward, doesn't go back. I, I don't That's know why weird. you would do that in a car today. Um, it, it just doesn't seem like that makes any sense. And I went and looked it up because I was trying to figure out how do you, like, am I just missing? Like, is there a mm. secret button up under here? And there was somebody who was talking about they are ergonomics specialist and that they've actually uh, had some consultations with people because they were trying to figure out a better position. And it's like, it's your seat in your mm. car. So that interesting. And I think it was, a, you know, that's anecdotal, but anyways, I thought it was interesting that there was information about that because other people are frustrated. Mm, that is interesting. Another note, uh, <laughs> if you watched my things I like about the Maki -E video, I miss being able to just dive my hand in here. There are a couple times like he's like, are you ready to get out? And I'm like, no, I'm waiting for you. Could you move your arm? Oh. Move your arm. And then I can go get whatever I put in there. Yeah. Um, also, just as a side note, I think this feels like something from the dollar store. It's weirdly like <laughs> velvet lined, which looks dirty. Obviously, someone else has used this um, velvet and plastic, not velvet, but like a plush, plush material. I Whatever. don't know. Yeah, there's uh, the glossy black plastic that uh, I've mentioned in the Polestar video uh, that I've noticed in a lot of cars. If you watch a Polestar video, the one the note was that it looks like an, a 90s boom box. So there's a lot of that here. There's a lot of the glossy black plastic, which I almost feel sort of incongruous against the, the matte silver and the wood, which is really quite a nice design aesthetic. And then we have gray tone matte kind of material. Maybe that's the vegan leather as well. So then why do they have the glossy black? That is just a preference. That's mine. I don't think that's bad. The doors piss me off. That's just a preference. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it. And I know a lot of people, if you do have a Tesla or considering one, it's very easy to cover these up. They have uh, like carbon fiber. Oh, cool. Some people actually match the wood grain. Oh, that'd um, be fun. Yeah, I don't, I think that looks bad, but I'm not a fan of the wood grain, so I wouldn't want to extend it. But the carbon fiber looks pretty nice. And I think there's just like a matte black as well. So there's options if that is, uh, you know, you end up, oh, see, I, the tear squeaky. <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really don't like the horizontal screen. There are a couple things that I feel uh, the driver needs access to. And with the vertical screen in the Mach-E, both the driver and the passenger have equal access to everything that they need. I feel like there were multiple times where Patrick was like leaning over or needed to see something. Yeah. And part of it's just me figuring things out, but True. it's also like, uh, you know, I, I'm used to having the Maki's driver screen. And I, I, I think it's a huge deal not to have a driver screen. I know it's very close to just have the speed limit over there and some of the other stuff. But uh, for example, the autopilot, having the autopilot information over here versus straight ahead. It's uh, j just, I, I don't know. I, I think I could get used to it, 
but there are some things that I don't mind getting used to like, Oh, okay. Well, that's a, you know, like on a steering wheel, like the buttons feel different. I'll get used to that. That's no big deal, but I don't want to get, have to get used to where my speed limit is and, uh, where the uh, autopilot, copilot, whatever it is, information is, I want it where I want it and where it's been in every car that I've driven for the past 40 years, um, not 40, 30, so I'm not that old. <laughs> I've had some of these debates online. What is uh, innovation just for innovation's sake and like form over functionality or functionality over form. So uh, it's the same thing with like the air vents. The air vents were very frustrating. It's like, wow, that's really cool. Oh, that looks cool. I can like maneuver the air vents on the touch screen and there's nothing to adjust physically. And then I was driving and there's cyclists on the roads and I needed to adjust the events. And I was like, all right, this is just stupid. Like it should be very quick and easy, something that I can do while I'm driving. And then for example, to adjust the fan speed up and down, it's mm. a open it, tap, 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 tap. And yes, you can put it on auto, but auto was never at the speed that I wanted, to, wanted it to be. So, um, and the, the area that you have to tap is very small. Yeah. So I didn't like that at all. The, the Maki has some of that stuff too. And it bugs me as well to adjust the fan speed. It's like a, a slider. Now, granted, it's a bigger slider and it's very easy to slide up and down and you can, and you can also tap it. Um, so I'm not necessarily a fan of it in either, but I really did not like this one where it was like this little tiny thing that I got to tap. And I think that's overall, like on this, this screen, like some of my issues are is the, the font sizes. It's like, mm. and and I've seen some criticisms of the Mach E screen, and part of it I think is is because they're using some bigger proportions, which may not look as aesthetically pleasing, but at least I can see it when I'm driving at 70 miles an hour, and I need to to see like what is the fan at, and I don't really need to see what the fan is at. I can sort of tell, but it's sort of nice to know like oh it's at six or whatever. But it's like you know, it's small fonts. Um, I mean even just looking here, it's like the word trunk. Course it's I'm, very small. Yeah, I, of course, I'm sitting here and I'm not driving, so it's not that big of a deal. But um, I think they went over like, wow, that this looks very pretty. Great, great. It looks pretty, but it's not as functional. And I'll argue yeah. that. Well, and the, it, there's obviously a design aesthetic here. Everything is quite clean and simplistic. The fact that every sub menu is gray and white and black. Yeah. Is it even black? Yeah. So it's the sub menus. There's some color, but the radio menu, for example, that we went to, the radio stations are all the same color. I appreciate that on the Maki, -E, you have the radio icons that are obviously, yeah, they're very colorful. Like I know what our radio stations are. And when we're just moving and not like I've been driving it much, but you can just jab at it and be like yeah. that one, it's the Pitbull one it, or whatever. And the greatest, like, when we first got in it this morning, I'll be honest, like I was like, I like the maps in here better than the mach -E, And it's simply because the road lines are thicker and it's easier to see. But then as we were looking at for stuff throughout the day, for example, we were looking for a park or a lake to go hang out by. It's like this dull, dull grayness. Uh, it, it's, it, it's sort of like, it looks nice. It's very pleasing to look at, but it's like, yeah, but I want to find a park and like, yeah, I can see the word park over here for like wash park, but I, I know that's a park, you know, and I'm pointing at stuff that you can't see, but there's stuff that I like, I know that it's a park, but it's just like, uh, it's just a different shade of gray. Yeah. Again, looks nice. Like if you, when you see the screenshots of this, uh, the maps looks very nice, but if you're actually trying to use it and find like the roads and the, the, the water and those type of things, it's more difficult when it's just like a grayscale. I mean, think about it. Like if this was like the, the optimal way of doing it, like you'd log into your computer and Google Maps should look this way. Yeah. But you would be pissed off if Google Maps looked like this on your computer because it's not as functional. Like the overall aesthetic is being placed at a higher value than what is more functional it is like you said form of a and, function and, and and i do want to say it's like i don't like the maps in the sync system in the maki -E, which is why i use google maps or Waze or a better route planner or like the multitude of other options 
but at least in Apple sync, CarPlay. yeah, mm-hmm. in CarPlay, Apple Maps, uh, but sync does have some color to it and it has like a 3d mode as well. So it has some, you know, some good things, but to me, both navigation systems are something that I'm not happy with or not navigation. I would say maps. I kind of feel like you and I are both Android users. We like being able to customize things, have open source things to change whatever we want mm-hmm. and, and I've, options you and like to have options. options. We really like options. And it feels like this system, the whole Tesla system is more like an iPhone. It's more like the, the whole Apple operating system where it tells you what it thinks is best. And this is what's set. Mm -hmm. And it's got, it's got lots of options that you can change and everything, but the whole UI, everything is set. It's, it's just like the music choices. It's like, I understand a lot of people use Spotify. Um, I don't use it because I, you know, have said it's like i have uh youtube music as well as amazon music um i've never used tune in and i know that tesla may be adding more options but it's like i i don't like when the options are chosen for me and even with the uh, android and apple carplay there's only certain music apps that will work within those systems but at least it's a multitude of systems and it's not uh as as limited and it's not just the music options, but there's, you know, the other things as, as far as like the maps and navigation, this is what you get. And I very much appreciate that in the sync system within the Mach-E, you can choose what map system you want. And if you want to use Google Maps, you can use that and it'll show you your directions over on the screen. And then also in the driver's screen, it'll uh, pump in the Google Maps turn by turn instructions in the driver's screen. So if you want to be doing other stuff over here or your passenger, you still have your instructions over here or uh, for the driver because the driver is focused on that. It's a great system and you have the option of switching and they, they're they announcing more and more stuff. They just announced something uh, this past week where it's like you can find literary sites. So if they're, you know, we're in front of a baseball field. So if this baseball field was in a book, it would actually pop up and like give you information about that. Oh, that's so cute. Very random and obscure. And it's an option. So mm-hmm. that's, those are the type of things I'm talking about. And that's th- via Android auto, um, which of course ties right into the system because they allow for that. And you'll have to tell us what you think. Like if you're an Android or an Apple user, do you feel like the system or the Mach-E system is more in line with something that you're familiar with? W- what do you think? Cause uh, Patrick only just got an iPhone recently, so we are for work. For I, work, so forced, be, <laughs> forced upon me. <laughs> but it's a great opportunity to get used to both systems, and it, it, there's so many people that use both. So maybe you prefer Tesla, and you have an iPhone. Let us know. And we're gonna. I'm gonna sort of address the elephant in the room because uh, the the two big things that everybody says that Tesla has is range as well as a charging network. Now we've been charging this just at home. We all know about the the Tesla superchargers. Uh, We are not gonna use a Tesla supercharger tonight, we've decided um, because it's easier just to charge at home and our nearest supercharger uh, is I think uh, 15 miles away. It's Park Meadows, right? Yeah. Yeah. The nearest fast charger for our Mach-E is two blocks away. the one that we charged up for the video. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's actually just right there. Yeah, it's just it's yeah. just like a block away we're, now. We're two blocks from my house right yeah. now. Yeah. So it's it's sort of like, oh, the supercharger network, yay, it's great. The CCS network around here is fantastic. And not only just in Denver, but like around Denver, uh, like in one of our other videos, we charged in like Fairplay and Frisco and um, Carbondale. So there's, there's, pretty darn good fast charging around here. The fast charging network is better than most people realize. And that's why we decided that it was okay to buy a Mach-E and the fast charging network is expanding quickly. And for us, this is also another principal thing. If you want, if you want EVs to be popular, if you want EVs to expand, 
Tesla is the only one with a proprietary network right now. Rivian is looking at doing a proprietary network, and that's stupid. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but it's stupid. You do not want to propagate a system where every manufacturer is coming up with their own charging system. It creates redundancy. It's wasteful. So to us, it's a huge turnoff to see that, uh, you know, you can only charge at a Tesla supercharger. Granted, we know all about the adapters for the slower charging and whatnot, but that's a principal thing for us. And it's also why we think it's very important for us. And what we believe is to support the open standards of the J1772 and CCS fast charging networks because that's what GM is using. That's what Ford is using. Nissan, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes, BMW, all of them are set on that standard, which means it's going to be better for us in the long run if we can build up that network. And I think that's important. Yeah, and it's not reliant upon each automaker to develop something new. And any new automaker that wants to participate in this, the technology exists. And that's sort of why I think we've been so patient with any issues with charging the mach -E and stuff like that, because this is going to be the norm. We want this to be the norm. We want it to be that there's one system that every car can use, you know? So yeah, we'll, we'll work out these kinks. We're dedicated to that and we're good with being a, a part of the beginning of this because won't it be great when it's just what's the new VW, what's the new Ford, yeah. you know, and it, you know that you can plug it into the network and it's good to go. And the, the network is just expanding. Yeah. And, and we've done, cause we know where we're going to, where we're going to travel and I've mapped it out, you know, going to like Santa Fe to San Diego to North Carolina. It's like using a better route planner. It's like, it basically it's like, yeah, it's no problem. We can make those runs. I've seen people make those runs across the country or from Colorado to California in a mach -E with no issues. The EV record from coast to coast was set in a Porsche using the CCS network. So it's it's there, it's good, still needs improvement. Um, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, like if we were gonna go to Wyoming, which we're not, hmm. there's no fast charging there. I mean, it's just basically non-existent. I think there's like one Harley Davidson dealer that has a fast charger in the entire state. So. There are areas where there's gaps, but for us, it's it's going to be fine. So we're good to go. And then, of course, the other part of that is the range. And I'm sort of disappointed. I, I, I like the graphs that the that are in the Tesla that show, first of all, uh, watt hours per mile. That's sort of like a different way of looking at range. But um, I, I like both ways. And I wish... Tesla and uh, Ford both had watt hours per mile plus miles per kilowatt hour. So I wouldn't have to do all these translations mm. in my head. So it'll show me the last 30 miles, which we were at 248 watt hours per mile, which is basically right at, we'll just go ahead and say that's uh, like four miles per kilowatt hour, mm. which if you, if you've seen my post, like we, did like weekend trips and stuff very similar to what we did today and got 3.9 out of the Mach-E. So Tesla is more efficient, but has a smaller battery. So depending on how you look at it, good, bad, or whatever, Mach-E has been doing great relatively efficiency wise, especially when everybody's like, Oh, the Mach-E will never come close to the range of the model Y and all this other stuff. But from our experience in the past, couple of days plus having our Mach-E for a month the Mach-E having slightly less efficiency but a slightly bigger battery will basically put it pretty pretty close to the Model Y close enough to where it really doesn't freaking matter so you know mm -hmm. it's like they're both have enough range so that you can take road trips and that's all that really matters is, is like it doesn't have to be like you know, this one is great and this one is horrible. No, it's not like that. It's like, they're both pretty good and probably under certain conditions, one is better than the other. I don't know. All I know is, is that in my experience, they're, they're fairly close together. So if I were having to make a decision based on range and charging network, 
either one would meet my needs. And you may need to evaluate that. If you live in Wyoming, don't buy a Mach-E. Hmm. I'll, I'll just say that right now. Don't buy a Mach-E if you need the fast charging. If you're just driving it around town, you don't need fast charging. So it doesn't matter. But um, in a large portion of the United States, either car will be fine range-wise, charging network-wise. It's like I've been hearing so long <laughs> that the Mach-E doesn't have the range and you're not going to be able to charge it. And both of those have been proven wrong in my time with the Mach-E. If you want to try a Mach-E for a month and then tell me that it, it doesn't work, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and like really, they're, this is wonderful technology. Both of these cars are amazing. Uh, all the cars that Tesla has made are amazing and innovative and have just inspired innovation in general uh, and they're not without flaws you know and so the i think it can be hard dealing with people who are very enthusiastic about the thing that they like and if you say something bad then they get enthusiastic about what you said so that can be hard um but just to touch on that don't get a a maki in wyoming thing I, I personally have a hard time when people say get a Tesla because of the supercharger network, because once again, that is investing in one product that is sworn only to that product. And you, you get four or five cars, however many cars Tesla is going to make. And, and how is it five? They have four models right now. And They're then the Cybertruck is coming. Cybertruck and the Roadster, which. So do, you theoretically whatever. will have six or seven cars, but with with us with the ccs network uh, with uh, the amount of options that we have we're gonna have so many cars to pick from which means that more people are going to be enthusiastic about evs more people are going to be able to find the vehicles that suit them because these seven cars are not going to suit everyone none of them suit me to there be are, totally honest and, and i looked this up the other day there are um about 250 models of cars on sale in the united states so that's actually the, and the reason for that is, is like we all have minor differences and choices and we want trucks or vans. That's or, it though? It seems like more, really. 250 yeah, miles Yeah, well, car. I mean, wow. that, it's actually quite a few if you think, you yeah. know, how many manufacturers there are and each one has seven to 10 or whatever. Yeah. Um, and there, and there's probably some slight variations in there, but I, I, I think that's a great illustration that there's a lot of variety out there and there's a lot of variety for a reason. We've been rambling too long. We so have. I think we should wrap it up. We've told you a lot of information. If you have any specific questions about our thoughts on anything in particular, um, ask them in the comments. If we didn't go over that or we didn't figure it out or whatever, we'll, we'll be honest and say so. We'll try to give you our honest opinions on all of this. And, you know, we're obviously probably biased because we just spent $60,000 on a, on a, oh my gosh. Don't say it like that. But anyways, if you want to participate in this conversation, please feel free to leave it down below. Hopefully you can be polite. Uh, <laughs> we, we all like cars here. We like EVs. Yes. So, yeah. I'm, thank you for sticking with us throughout this. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you think we're idiots, give it a thumbs down. Please don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. But uh, if, you, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more of us uh, test driving other EVs, we're going to have a lot, a lot of Mach-E content. We're going to test out the CCS network all summer. So if you want to see more of that, make sure you subscribe. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. Hopefully by the time you watch this, we're over 2,000 subscribers. Um, and that really does make our day. It's it, We appreciate everybody that subscribed. Yeah, and thank you for being such an amazing community. I love that there are so many people who care about the Maki and who care about EVs and who are interested in sharing this and helping each other. And if we say anything wrong or get anything wrong, please know that we appreciate you correcting us kindly down below and sharing your knowledge with us and the community that we're all a part of. So thank you for that. So you guys have a great day. And hopefully, whatever whatever EV you choose, it's always fully charged. <laughs> I, I'm going to get so the cheesy. line at some point. Someone said stay charged. Stay charged. Good. Do you like okay. well, Stay charged. Stay charged. Wait. How? No? I can't click with this hand. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>